Well, what is going on right here under the water and how does this help us as bass anglers? Well, I will get to that in just a second, but first I want to tell you how I got to this particular situation. I was out on the water yesterday and wanted to do a follow-up video to what happens after a heavy rainfall. The one I did a few months ago was in the spring and I wanted to do one in the summertime. The water was 82 degrees after the rain had cooled it down. And I started to investigate in the same place I had before and I barely found any life and saw zero bass whatsoever. So I knew I had to move to a different part of the lake. I came across an insect hatch and I'm no expert with insects, but I believe these were uh, the husks or the shells or what was left over from a mayfly hatch. And the interesting thing was we had no wind it was extremely calm and this was taking place in a shady portion of the lake. So I wanted to drop the camera down and see what was going on. Well, it didn't take long and I started to find signs of life immediately. I had some bass that were up in the extreme shallows, taking a look in the rocks. Very much they appeared to be looking at something emerging from the bottom, looking for something to eat. Well, if an insect hatch was going on, that definitely would make sense. Then I saw some better bass as well, and they were heading down to deeper water, which absolutely fit the situation. The sun was high overhead, and absolutely beating down very, very intense sunlight. Well, when I started to follow this particular bass down and I got in that 15 to 20 foot range, I started to see these clouds of silt all over the place. Now I was filming an area that was maybe 20, 30 yards in length. And everywhere I went, I was seeing these silt clouds. Well, the first thing I ran across was some carp down on the bottom eating some grass and then I noticed that there were panfish moving in and out of the silt cloud. And I was like, well, that's interesting. But that carp was disturbing the bottom. And if there were insects down there, then that disturbance was probably causing them to kick loose. So I wanted to do a little experiment. I took the sub and deliberately ran it into the bottom of the lake bed and then came back up. And as soon as I did this, when I created this, artificial silt cloud that I made, I turned the camera and panfish and small bass were moving right into this silt cloud immediately. We can even see an area over here where we've got a bluegill just literally looking at the bottom and picking stuff off and eating it. Well, then I ran across something that I have never seen before. Here's this big soft shell turtle down here just rummaging around. Once again, I'm going to assume it was eating insect larvae. And there are panfish and a bass. Now, granted, this isn't a huge bass, but this bass right here is following this soft shell turtle everywhere it goes. At different points of the bass, you can see its eye looking up at the camera. It was very aware that I was there, the camera was there, but it never left this soft shell turtle and kept moving in and out of the silt cloud. Clearly, the food chain was getting activated from the bottom up. Well, how does this help us as bass anglers? We talk about all the time on the channel here, find life, find bass. Well, we often assume that that finding life means finding fish of some sort. Well, this is a deeper dive into the food chain from the bottom up. These insects got things started with the hatch. And then when we've got carp and turtles down there rummaging around on the bottom, it just creates this disturbance that brings in fish of all different sizes. And we can assume that if I would have stayed here a little bit longer, that we would have seen even more predators come into the area. Well, as far as lures, this is a perfect situation for these mud puffing type of baits. Well, what do I mean by that? Think about heavier jigs, bigger football jigs, Carolina rigs, things that are going to kind of disturb that bottom, disturb that silt, and draw the attention of the fish. Every time there was a silt cloud, whether I created it on my own with the camera or carp or turtles were creating it, there was life 
in the area. Even something like Ned Rigs with a little bit heavier weight on there or Shaky Heads with a heavier weight are going to be great lures for this type of situation. And this is so key during the summertime when fishing can be extremely tough. It seems like the fish scatter out. They aren't quite in those big schools like they were in the spring and going to be here in the fall. So when we find life of any sort, we always want to check it out. It could be a real dynamite location because down there below the water, that food chain is really going. And hey, if you wanna watch a video about what it takes to have the perfect conditions to keep bass shallow most of the year, go ahead and check this one out right here. And make sure that you go ahead and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.